When we defined the determinant of a matrix, we used this idea that a permutation has a naturally associated sign, plus or minus. So the odd permutations, those that can be written as an odd number of transpositions, are given a minus sign, and those that are even, can be written as an even number of transpositions, are assigned a plus sign. Now, I didn't talk about why that made sense, why is that well defined? Because you might imagine that you could find a permutation that you could write as an odd number of transpositions and also as an even number of transpositions, and then you wouldn't know which sign to give to that permutation. Is it a plus or is it a minus? The point is that can't happen. Any permutation, if it can be written as an odd number of transpositions, cannot be written as an even number and vice versa. But that's not obvious. So the purpose of this video is to prove that. Um, the proof I'm going to give you is inspired by a discussion I read on Math Overflow yesterday, actually. Um, I've given you the link here so you can read the discussion if you want. Uh, the proof is, I think, originally due to Pierre Cartier, and it's explained in the answers of Bjorn Poonen and Dan Ramras on that question. Um, but I'm maybe going to give it in slightly simpler language than, than what they say. So here's how we go. Let's take an example. Let's take the permutation um, sigma equals 1, 2, 3, 4. The permutation of four things, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, and 4 goes back to 1. So we're going to draw a graph in other words, a bunch of dots connected by edges. And the dots are going to be labelled 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, in general, this will be 1 up to n, if, if you're a permutation of n things. And we're going to connect them in all possible ways using edges. What we get is called the complete graph on n vertices. Uh, in this case, n equals 4. And what we're going to do is we're going to orient this graph. We're going to make a choice of an arrowhead on each edge. And it really is a choice. It doesn't matter. We can do it in any way we want. And actually, the main point of this video will be to show that it didn't matter which, which choice we made. OK, now we're going to apply our permutation. So the dots move around and the arrows move around. Um, in fancy language, we're doing an action of the permutation group on the set of orientations on the graph, but it doesn't matter. So 1 goes to 2, so this is going to be labelled 1. 2 goes to 3, this is going to be labelled 2, 3 and 4. And the arrow is still going to point from 1 to 2. It's still going to point from 2 to 3. So whatever choice we made to begin with translates into a choice on the right-hand side after we've done the permutation. So 1's going to point to 4, 2's going to point to 4, and 1's going to point to 3. Now, looking at these graphs, they're the same graph, but the arrows have changed. So the arrow that used to connect so, so this, this arrow here that I'm colouring in red uh, going from 1 to 4 ok we've changed the names of the vertices now but that arrow now points the opposite way so we're going to write minus on that edge because it's changed by contrast this edge which I'm now colouring in red going from 3 to 4 hasn't changed direction so we'll put a plus on it and this one going straight across has changed, so it gets a minus. The one going straight up hasn't changed, so it gets a plus. The one going down from 1 to 2 has changed, so it gets a minus. And the one going from 2 to 3 hasn't changed, so it gets a plus. What I do is, in order to get the sine of sigma, I'm going to make this as a definition. The sine of sigma is the product of all of these signs where we remember plus times minus is minus, minus times minus is plus, etc. So it'll be minus times minus times minus times plus times plus times plus, that's a minus, to minus 1. Okay, so that's how we're now defining the sine of sigma. 
Now there's two things. First, it's not obvious that's well defined because I made a choice to begin with. I chose these arrows to start with and if I picked a different orientation on my graph, you know, if let's say this arrow from 1 to 2 was actually pointing from 2 to 1, then I would get a different arrow over here, it would point down here, the, the, the signs would change. But the point is this overall product of signs is going to stay the same. We're going to prove that in a moment. So this is actually well defined. The second point is, it's not obvious what this definition has to do with the definition I gave you to begin with, you know, in terms of even and odd permutations. So that's the next thing we'll check is actually it's the same thing, it gives us the same notion. So first let's see what happens if I switch, let's say this, this blue edge from, from 1 to 2, so that it points from 2 to 1. Well as I said, one of the edges over here, the one going from 2 to 1, is going to change direction. So overall, what has happened? Well, this edge that I'm colouring in blue used to be a minus, but because I've changed this to point in the other direction, it becomes a plus. And this other edge, which I'm now colouring in blue, well, it used to be a plus, but now it's changed, so it becomes a minus. So because I'm changing two things, I get two minus signs. So in this product, the, the answer stays as, as a minus one. I don't change the overall sign. So two signs change and that, that cancels out. One possibility that I haven't considered here is what happens if I have an edge that doesn't move, right? So, you know, let, let me give you a, a really simple example. Let's just take the permutation one, two of two things. All right, so that edge doesn't move right it stays stays fixed so if I change the orientation here I'm going to change it over here and it's not hard to convince yourself well if it started off as a minus like it did here it's going to stay as a minus because I'm changing both of the orientations and if it started off as a plus it'll stay as a plus because I'm changing both of them so again overall the sign the product of all these signs doesn't change so first theorem, maybe it's a lemma really, but let's say it's a theorem because it's kind of important, is that um, this definition of the sine of sigma doesn't depend on the choice of arrows. That's what we just proved. Second thing we want to show is that this is the same as the notion of a sign in terms of odd and even permutations. And I'm going to split this up into two statements. First statement is um, if sigma is a transposition, it just switches two things, then its sign is minus one. It, that certainly should be true because it's an odd number of transpositions, right? One is an odd number. And secondly, if I take two transpositions and compose them, so do tau first and then sigma, the sign of the result should be just the product of the signs of sigma and of tau. Okay, well, let's prove this one first. Proof of two. If we have a transposition, I'm just going to draw a subset of the graph. Let's say we're swapping vertices i and j. And we've got a bunch of other vertices and edges coming out. I'm going to orient this, well, any way I like, but the way I'm going to choose is so that all of the arrows coming out of j are oriented away from j. And all the arrows coming out of i are oriented away from i, except the arrow from i to j is going to be oriented from i to j. Okay, when I swap them, that arrow changes direction. But all the other ones stay the same because they were all pointing out. Didn't matter whether it was i or j. So the only difference is one edge, which has a minus sign, all the others have pluses. So overall, the sign is minus 1. Okay, so that proves the second fact. Um, 
to see that the sign is multiplicative, so that if I compose the transpositions or to compose the permutations, I multiply the signs. Um, I'm going to draw another picture. Let's just take a really simple example. Uh, three elements, one, two, three. I'm going to do a cycle. One goes to two, goes to three. That's going to be tau. And I'm going to do a transposition. One goes to two. That's going to be sigma. And let's pick the arrows, something like that. So if I do tau, where do the arrows go? Well, one points to two, two points to three, and one points to three. If I do sigma to this, um, well, one's still supposed to point to two, two still supposed to point to three, and so is one. And overall, this is the permutation uh, sigma composed tau. So let's keep track of the signs. Uh, the sign of tau is obtained by multiplying the signs for these three edges. And this bottom one will be a minus because it switches direction. This left-hand one will be a minus because it switches direction. And this right-hand one will be a plus. So the sign of tau is going to be 1. And for sigma, well, this bottom edge stays fixed. This left-hand edge stays fixed. But this right-hand edge switches direction, so that gets a minus sign. So these red signs are the signs of tau and the signs of sigma for these edges. What about the sign of the composition? Well, going all the way from the left to the right, this bottom edge changes direction. This left-hand edge changes direction. And this right-hand edge also changes direction. So I get minus, minus, minus. And the point is, those three blue signs are what I get by multiplying the red signs on the corresponding edge. So for this one, uh, the, the one that's on the left-hand side, we have minus times plus gives us minus. And then the right-hand one plus times minus gives us minus. Etc. So the point is, these signs are just keeping track of every time it switches. And if it switches in the first one and then in the second one, it'll go back to the, where it started, so we'll get a plus. And if it switches during one of them and not during the other, then I'll get a minus. And if it doesn't switch either time, I still get a plus. Um, so in particular, the signs obviously mul uh, obviously multiplicative at each uh, on each edge and then I'm just multiplying all of those together so then the sign of tau uh, sigma composed tau is just the product of all those guys which is then the product of the sign of sigma and the sign of tau okay so that proves that it's multiplicative which proves the theorem <laughs>